I just finished up doing the gear reduction on my Razer 900. Um, a lot of you people may know about this. I don't know. I couldn't find this information anywhere. Everyone I talked to seemed to just say buy the Super ATV gears or buy the Turner gears. Uh, please don't do that. You are wasting your money. They are selling you the exact same thing you can get from Polaris using factory products for um, less than half the price of the Super ATV, less than a quarter of the price of the Turner. So, um, so here's a little intro to what I did. Um, if you look at these three right here, these are the three uh, reverse shaft and stage two gears um, sets available. So you have three different reductions you can go with. Stock 900, stock 500, stock 325 Ace. Um, they fit other bikes, but that's just how I'm going to call them. Okay, so this is the gears and this is their reduction, right? This, so this would be read 1.92 to 1, for instance. So if you look over here, in a 900... Putting the 325 gears gives you a 26.5% reduction. Call that a 27. Putting the 570 gears gets you a 12.3 reduction. We'll call it a 12. If you have a 570, putting the gears out of the 325 will give you a 12.7% reduction. So we'll call that a 13. Um, these are the same gears Turner is selling you. If you look at Solitude Customs videos, they came packaged the same way. The gears uh, metal has the exact same finish. It's the exact same gears. They are seriously marking this stuff up. 400%. Completely uncalled for. Uh, their stuff's all overpriced, but this is like, this is a whole new low for them. Um, so please don't waste your money buying the Turner gears or the Super ATV gears for that matter. You can get their 25% gear reduction, which is really um, a 27, uh, for less than 200 bucks shipped from Polaris. The part numbers for the big reduction, which would be these, um, the, the 4825, is uh, right here. Those are the part numbers. Um, so that's, that's what you'd put if you wanted to do the big gear reduction in the, the 900 or you want to do, it's also the same thing as the 13% in the 570. And here's the gears that come in a 570. So you could put this in a 900 if you only wanted to do, uh, say a 12.3% reduction. I don't know why you wouldn't do that, but interestingly enough, if you look at the high lifter edition, these are the part numbers it uses. So the high lifter edition just comes with 570 gears. Uh, big shout out to Solitude Customs because he told me about this, which made me curious, and then I found these. I find that this does work, in fact, so pay attention. Um, I got the damn thing out. It's a lot more work than I was led to believe. It's also a lot bigger. Uh, having a second person would have helped. It's not super heavy, but it is bulky. I managed to get it out, leaving in the, uh, the piece that converts the engine to the transmission, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, and the dry shaft, I just snuck it out, pulled it backwards. Um, that being said, I do need to clean out my idler bearing. It's full of sand. But a few things. Um, the bolt holding the primary gear on was extremely tight. Not the bolt, really, but the, the press fit. I maxed out the pressure on my puller with the impact and then smacked the end of the puller with a hammer four or five times and it popped off. This puller was like, I don't know, 12 bucks. Uh, most of them are like 50. I'll post the part number for it. It works great. Um, a lot of work though, I mean, I, I left the axles in the portal boxes, save me some work there. Um, obviously drain the oil before you pull it out, but I mean, it is in there, there's not a whole lot of extra room. You definitely want to come out right through here like I planned, um, it's the easiest way to do it. And you really had to finagle it to get it out past these mounts, it was not easy. But yep, so she's out, I'm going to split her open, um, still waiting for UPS to deliver my new gears. But yeah, it should be pretty interesting to get inside here and see what's what. Instead of using a nice seal like Honda would, they use an O-ring. It's a little O-ring on both these shafts, and that O-ring sits up here against some aluminum. And uh, it's definitely letting water through. I mean, there's a good bit of sand sitting right here, so I don't know. Uh, I'm not too sure about this. Okay, the transmission opened up. That's the reverse chain everyone talks about that breaks. It is pretty tiny. Looks about like the timing chain on a Honda 300. Uh, so the reduction we're going to get... It's going to be by changing this gear and this gear. This gear is part of the shaft, this gear is not. So we're going to put a bigger gear there. So hopefully it'll clear the case. If not, I'll do a little trimming. So yeah, we've got to uh, get this gear off and disassemble the shaft. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, you have to use um, a bearing puller and stuff. Um, I'm hoping to be able to all do it with this little tiny puller I got from Advanced Auto Parts. I think it'll work great. It was five bucks. Yep. So um, first you pull the the shift forks, then you press off your top bearing or pull off your top bearing with your puller, like so. Um, as seen in Solitude um, Customs video, there is enough room to pull out all three of these without messing with this at all. So um, 
it'll come up right against the bottom of this gear, but if you pull all three shafts out together, you almost need a third hand. You can get it out pretty easily. And then once you start disassembling it, you'll be able to separate these two. So yeah, your end game is to change out this, it's called the reverse shaft, and this gear. And that's the gear reduction. Observer may notice that I'm using a really flimsy puller here. That's because you need to be able to get it up in here, so it needs to be pretty thin. Um, so I maxed it out, it wasn't doing it. Applied just a tad of heat and it popped up an eighth of an inch. Heat and pressure, man. You can do a lot with heat and pressure. I haven't even started hitting it with a hammer yet. I just got my gears in from UPS. Interestingly enough, it comes wrapped in a red thing, um, just like the Turner <coughs> gears. Uh, you can see how much different uh, the size of the gears are. I haven't even opened them up yet, but um, see, that's much bigger and that's much smaller. So let's open them up. All right, so there's the stock gears, those two, and there's my gear reduction. Um, they look identical in every way, the grooves, the spines, the spacing. It's also really rough in here, uh, just like the Turner 25%, which leads me to believe that Turner is just selling you, um, they think they call it for like their 30, for their 40 inch tire or whatever, it's a 27%. They're selling it for like 750 bucks. All they're selling you is two factory Polaris gears that you can get for $200. I'm 99% sure at this point this will work, and this will give me a 27% gear reduction for $200. Do not buy the Turner or the Super ATV. They are ripping you off. So I'm going to install it real quick because it only gets done before dark. So I'll try to make a few more little videos, but maybe not too many. It's all done. I already test drove her. Gears work great. No whining or anything. Um, you can see the difference those spacers made. Oh, yes. 22 inches of ground clearance. <laughs> um, Really nice. The spacers made a big difference. It only sags about an inch now. Uh, it was sagging about three and a half inches. So two and a half inches of lift um, for you know less than four dollars. Looks awesome. Uh, be careful putting these exhaust springs on. They're really tight. Uh, my hand slipped in this guard right here, cut my fingernail in half, so that really hurt. Made me a nice electrical tape band-aid. Everything else went on pretty sweet. Um, there is some like there is some adjustment built into here, so if you don't do it right, you'll have to readjust your shifter linkage and everything because you have to. Um, it really, it really would have made a good idea to mark it, but I could see where the bolts went. Um, you can adjust how the transmission hooks to the engine a little bit. If you don't do it right, your belt housing won't line up right, and uh, neither will your shift linkage and your airbox. But um, that is one thing I wish I'd have known going into it. But it was pretty pretty easy install. Um, just a lot, just you know, it's time consuming. Uh, did require some pullers. The puller right here was barely strong enough. Had to use a torch, but I did get it to work. But yeah, um, all said and done, like, I mean, the bike's obviously not fully put together yet. It's just enough to drive it. Um, took me four hours today. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, um, but it'll be worth it. Get it from any um, OEM Polaris dealer for about 200 bucks. I got mine for like 170 from Partzilla. And uh, it's just two factory gears. You swap in there and you got a 27% reduction for high, low, and reverse. It's a reduction for all three ranges. So it's a, um, should be pretty solid. With the portals, I'm at like, I don't know, a 60, 57%, 67% reduction. I don't know. It's a, it depends. They call it a 30 or a 40% portal. But I'm geared plenty low enough to turn these tires all day long and not burn a belt. I did put in a Gates carbon belt. I have a clutch kit for it, but I'm going to see how it rides geared this low, and then I'll play with the clutches. Reduction made. It, um, it drives better than stock now on 33 and a half inch tractor tires. There's no lurching or surging when the belt engages because it's actually geared lo much lower than stock, even if you take into account the circumference of the tires. So it, it really feels like a quality product. There's no like, nah, nah, nah. you know, these things usually kind of surge and like slip a little bit when they take off. I think part of that has to do with the new belt. Um, but I mean, the combination of the Gates belt, the portals, and the gear reduction really makes it feel like 100% solid on these 33 and a half inch tractor tires. Very happy with it. Made a huge difference. 27%. It's perfect. Um, I, I think I, I think I'll have a very reliable setup now because there's less stress on the belt, and um, there's really less stress on the axles too because the portals are a 30% reduction after the axle. So uh, having the torque multiplier after the axle should save them. Um, hopefully I'll be able to run these giant tires on stock axles and keep it, you know, keep it as reliable yet still pretty badass and uh, still pretty narrow. Look at that ground clearance. Oh, it's so sweet.